what it do? Bad Tom Crew. Hey, man, listen, today you read the title and the thumbnail correctly. I'm going to be matchmaking not just a couple of weeks in August. Oh, these lineups are trash. No, dude. I'm going to be matchmaking the entire rest of the fucking year. Okay, I'm going to be giving you main events through August, September, October, November, December. Right? These are fight night main events, pay per view main events, notable fights that I want to see on these cards. Everything that I would be planning out if I was the matchmaker of the UFC, and I should be the matchmaker. Today, I'm going to prove it, all right? So let's start off uh, Abu Dhabi. Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Namagomedov. If I look briefly at the card, we got some great fights on here. My boy Nick Diaz is getting a W. Great card. All I'm going to do is scroll up to fucking Tybura versus Spivak a week later and say absolutely not. This is a who FC level fucking card. This is a Bellator card. If I've ever seen one, I mean, Yana Santos is the feature fight. Come on. You know, Marchin Tybura main event. You know, he's a great fighter. I'd love to fight him. But I'm absolutely not letting Marchin Tybura main event a card. The smell of this fucking octagon with these two in it, bro. I'm not doing it. So starting off strong, my main event on August 10th, I'm going to steal a, a fight from UFC uh, Abu Dhabi. I'm going to make it a main event a week later. I'm going to do Marlon Cheeto Vera. Versus Davis and Figueredo as the main event, August 10th. You know, co-main event of Tybora Spivak. That is how you fix an Apex card. And I know what you're saying. Oh, why are you removing from so why are you removing from the card? Why are you making it worse? It already has fucking Nick Diaz and Tony Ferguson on it. You're already watching it, dude. It already has Shamil the Blob Gaziev on it, bro. You're already watching it, okay? You can remove one fight that's gonna get overshadowed by a great main event of Corey Sanhagen versus Umar and give them their own spotlight a week later. These are two championship uh, fighters. These are guys that have fought for belts. These are guys that go five rounds easily. So I think making them a main event a week later is a smart move to, to increase the quality of that card. So August 10th, I'm going to do Cheeto versus Figueredo as my main event. Moving on, we've got August 24th, and there is, there is nothing really kind of set for that date, you know what I mean? Like they have a couple of fights after UFC 305, which is the week before, right? I'm not going to touch 305. It's perfect. Uh, just adding Dan Hooker Gamera is, is the ultimate key to that. But yeah, August 24th, you look at these fights, you got Roman Kopilov uh, versus Bruno Ferreira. These are all good fights. Michael Morales, Neil Magny, the GOAT. Um, it just needs a main event. So August 24th, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add Khalil Roundtree versus Bogdan Guskov as the main event August 24th. So this is already cooking up a badass summer lineup. You think about the main events that you've got in August. Sanhagen to Magomedov, Cheeto Figueredo, you've got Duplessis Adesanya, and you're finishing off August with Khalil Roundtree versus Agent 47. You're fucking welcome, okay? This is my birthday month. This is the goaded month. This is how you, this is how you cook up. I feel like all these fight nights, all you need is one good main event, like a solid real matchup that people actually want to watch like these guys aren't even that highly ranked but i want to see these two fight each other so Khalil roundtree's coming off a suspension he should be done with the suspension already and I, I and i've heard him say he doesn't cut a lot of weight bogdan guskov's the guy that's taken short notice fights at 205 he trains in the u.s so i know this is a pretty easy matchup to put together in my opinion so let's do Khalil roundtree versus bogdan guskov august 24th in the apex as the main event and again if you're going to do the if you're going to do the apex you need violent fucking fights cheeto figueredo that's violent in the apex we're going to hear cheeto complaining in real time bogdan guskov khalil rantry you will literally hear these two fucking you know marauders kicking the shit out of each other so that's my lineup for august let's move on to september now i'm gonna be real with you bro the ufc is low-key cooking up in september i'm gonna be nice to them dude uh where is it dude Dude, Gilbert Burns and Sean Brady, that is a perfect example of how you do a fucking fight night. I don't need anything else on this card. I don't give a fuck who else is on this card. That's a great main event. I'm watching it. That's how you do it. It's really not that hard. So I'm going to leave this card completely as it is. All right. September 8th, the UFC has cooked up. They, they've done it. September 14th, we've got UFC Noche, UFC 306. They can't decide a fucking name for this thing. The Sphere. We all know what's going to be on this card. We all know what's going to be on this card. It's going to be Sean O'Malley versus Marab. It's going to be probably Shevchenko versus uh, Grasso 3. 
And I would say they probably add Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez to that card. And that's kind of what you've got for UFC Noche. Not much that I need to do. I've already done videos talking about what needs to be on that card and my predictions for that and stuff like that. So I'm not going to touch on that really here. The week after that, they've got UFC Paris. Again, I'm not going to touch it. Moicano BSD, great main event. Imavov, Brendan Allen, great co-main event. This is a very high quality fight night. Why can't they all fucking be like this? Dude, dude, why are we getting so starved of good fights? That they're almost like tricking us into just accepting anything. Just be like, oh, well, I mean, at least it's going to be good in September. You do, you can do this every week. You're proving it. So September is totally fine. I'm, I, don't, I don't think I have anything here in my notes about what's in September. Yeah, I literally am not changing a thing in September. Leave the lineup as it is. Let's move on to October though. Okay, because when you look at the lineup, we've got all this stuff. And then October, they only have UFC 308. Right, UFC 308, the pay-per-view in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to talk about that later. We've got two other cards that we need in October. So I'm going to say October 5th, UFC 307, Salt Lake City. Why am I doing a Trump voice? Let's do Ilya versus Max. October 5th, UFC 307, Ilya versus Max Holloway is the main event in Salt Lake City. Let's do Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena. Such a fucking dog shit fight, but that's what they're making. Put that as the co-main event. Other fights I want to see on that card, I think we have to do Charles Oliveira versus Colby Covington. I think that is a great fight to add to this, this event, to really ignore the fact that there's a co-main event of Raquel Pennington and Juliana Pena. I would say Charles Oliveira versus Colby Covington goes a long way in making the fans happy with such a big fucking, uh, you know, co-main event like that. You know, that's definitely going to go 25 minutes, so... Here's Charles versus Colby to make up for it. I would also add Jeff Neal versus Randy Brown. I don't know why, but I, that's something that I wrote down in my notes here. I'm feeling like Jeff Neal versus Randy Brown is a fight we need to see. Put that on 30, uh, 307, and you got yourself a hell of a pay-per-view. So yeah, that's my first fight in October. October 5th, we're going to do 307. Uh, I would take a week off, and then I would do October 19th, probably in the Apex. Let's do a main event of Movsar Evloev versus Aljamain Sterling. These guys are tweeting back and forth, constantly arguing. They were trying to, apparently, apparently Aljo was saying they were trying to get it on UFC Paris. Bro, you're not going to Paris, buddy. Aljo is trying to get a free holiday to Paris. That motherfucker's getting sent to the fucking apex immediately. Movsar Evloev, come on, brother. This is your yearly fight, so I'm gonna send you to the apex for this one. I think Aljo versus Movsar is a great main event to a fight. Because I don't know about you guys, this is a fight that I care about, but I know that in terms of pay-per-view value and in terms of how many people are really dying to see this fight, I don't think there's many people that are like, bro, I need to see Aljo versus Movsar, dude. Like, the, dude, this is a stacked pay-per-view. They got Aljo versus Movsar. I think this is a fight that, you know, real MMA fans want to see, but they're not going out of their way to see. So I would say put this as an ESPN Plus main event. Put this as an ESPN main event. Maybe in the apex, maybe on a location like a, in some city in, in America. I think that that's a perfectly great main event I instead of just adding it to a pay-per-view where it's not going to do that much. So yeah, let's do Movsar Evloe versus Aljo. Five rounds as well. A couple weeks after Ilya versus Max. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm setting up the next number one contender. That's a real thing. That's a real thing that we do in the matchmaking business. Come on. We're only in October. I, I feel like I should already be hired by the UFC, but regardless. Now we got to talk about October 26th, UFC 308. We've got Cyril Gant, the Paw Patrol uh, main character himself. He's finished filming the movie. Uh, apparently Ryan Gosling was on the set as well. So shout out to Cyril Gant. He's going to be fighting Alexander Volkov on that card. I think we all know what the main event is. Right? We, we, all, we all know that the main event is going to be uh, Islam Markashev versus Armin. Armin has got to film his little anti-bullying Captain America fucking PSA. That's tough, buddy. Uh, if you want to do it on my channel, I'm happy to have you on the channel, Armin. I can give you a shout out, bro, and maybe you can get a title shot. But yeah, let's do Armin versus Islam as the main event in Abu Dhabi. I would say also let's do Bilal Muhammad defending his welterweight title versus Shavkat Rachmanov. Now, I know what you're saying. What about JDM versus Shavkat? If there was no injuries, if like if we're Adam Silver and fucking 2K, we turn off injuries. Obviously, I want to see JDM versus Shavkat at 305 in Perth, but... JDM's going to have a long recovery from his arm injury. I think Shavkat's ready to fight. So 
Let's just do the winner of the title fight at 304 versus uh, Shavkat in Abu Dhabi. Let's not sit around waiting for a number one contender fight. I know that's what Leon Edwards wants, but if he somehow flukes a win over Bilal Muhammad, let's do Leon versus Shavkat or Bilal versus Shavkat, Abu Dhabi, October. That's a banger co-main event. And then featured fight to really sell this card. Let's do Jared Cannonier versus Hamza Chemaev. So that's what you get as the big triple header at 308 in Abu Dhabi. You get Islam versus Armin. You get Bilal versus Shavkat. And you get uh, Jared Cannonier versus Hamzat Chemaev. And, you know, I know you guys don't like Hamzat Chemaev, but, you know, I can vouch for him as a fellow tummy ache enjoyer myself, somebody that's currently, you know, dealing with a Hamzat Chemaev level immunity system. You can hear it in my fucking voice. Um, brother, we, brother, we're going to smash this guy, brother. This is great fight, brother. Okay, that's what I'm doing for October, you know. So we're cooking up a lineup here, you know. Listen to this lineup real quick, dude. Cheeto Figueredo, August 10th. Khalil Roundtree Bogdan Guskov, August 24th. October 5th, Ilya versus Max. And Charles versus Colby's on that card as well. October 19th, 19th, Evloev versus Aljo. October 26th, Islam versus Armin. Bilal versus Shavkat. Hananir versus Chemayev. I'm fucking cooking. I'm cooking right now, dude. Let's talk about some other cards that the UFC is definitely trying to put together. We know November 9th is when they want to do the MSG card. So you know november 9th let's talk about that we know what the main event's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be john jones versus steep amy hey blue eyes gonna be jones versus steep a but if jones is in jail if he is actually imprisoned for for his crimes which is probably not gonna happen if that does somehow happen i think the ufc will do uh tom aspinall versus alex Pereira for the heavyweight title or curtis blades versus alex Pereira for the heavyweight title whoever the interim champion is i think they're just gonna get promoted and fight Pereira MSG for the title. If 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 the UFC you know pays off the legal system, we get Jones versus Miocic as the main event. I think a great co-main event would be Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankaev. I'm not letting this fucking guy dictate the rules and say, "Oh, I'm gonna fight in Abu Dhabi, brother. I want to fight in Abu Dhabi, bro." You beat Johnny Walker, dude. You don't get to call the fucking shots with Alex Pereira. So let's do Pereira versus Ankaev MSG co-main event to Jones versus Stipe. If Jones versus Stipe falls out, you have a main event right there as well. I think other fights that you add to that card to really sell it would be uh, Wonderboy versus Joaquin Buckley. That's apparently in the works. Let's do Wonderboy versus Joaquin Buckley at MSG. And honestly, I know that I don't talk about it a lot on this channel, but a WMMA fight I would like to would be Aaron Blanchfield versus Rosna Mayunas. I think that's a great fight that you add to the MSG card. It's already gonna sell. That's why I'm saying. That's what I'm saying with these cards. You don't have to stack them, top to fucking bottom. If you get Jones versus Stipe, you get Alex Pereira defending his belt, and you get Wonder Boy versus Buckley. You add some other good fights. People are gonna fucking watch that. You don't have to do every single fight is like a title elimination bout. So that's what I'm thinking for 309 in November, uh, November 9th MSG. That's what I'm thinking. Let's move on to the fight nights in November. So I'm going to do two fight nights in November. First one, November 23rd. Don't have much explanation for it. Two guys that are injured that I think uh, would, would match up well against each other. And they're not going to give away their rank to somebody if they're still injured or if we find out that they're kind of washed now. Let's do Benil Dariush versus Hafiel Fiziev, bro. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's do that. You know, these guys are number six and number seven. Like I said, if they're both washed, I don't want to give away their ranking for free to somebody that you think they're kind of rebuilding against. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to throw Benil Dariush to Jalen Turner. And we've got Jalen Turner, who's 50-50 coin flipping every fight, suddenly in the top 10 or top 7, right? Uh, same with Fiziev. So I think Benil Dariush versus Hafiel Fiziev, that's a great fight night main event for the Apex. Apparently, it's going to be done after this year, so... Let's, let's, let's put together some decent cards before we leave the Apex finally. Uh, but this is a decent fight night main event to go in front of a crowd as well. I, I think this is just a great idea for November. Let's do Dariush versus Fizzy of November 23rd. Uh, last one for November. I was thinking about some canceled matchups, some guys that are injured that I would like to see fight each other. And honestly, hear me out, bro. November 30th, let's do Carlos Olberg versus Jamal... Uh, 40 camera angles, salty man, hill, bro. I think this is a banger fight, dude. I remember people being more kind of intrigued by this matchup than by uh, Hill versus Roundtree. 
And I think, honestly, Hill versus Roundtree is a fight you can kind of do whenever. I think right now it's, it's either fraud check or title shot for Carlos Olbeck. That's kind of the spot that he's at. They fed him so many cans that people actually think he's going to smoke Jamal Hill. I'm sensing a big, old fraud check from this matchup, but I would love to see it. And the fact that I don't really know, whereas with Hill versus Roundtree, I actually think Hill beats him. Like, I'm not really too up in the air about it. I'm still kind of 50-50 on Olberg versus Hill. Like, the recency bias is kicking my ass right now, bro. I don't know if this guy actually, like, got destroyed by Pereira because he's trash or because Pereira's just goaded. I, I cannot decide. So, let's do Hill versus Olberg as a main event in November. I think that's a great way to end off the month and lead into the big month of December. And yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about next. So we've got November 30th, Hill versus Olberg. December, bro, December. Now, obviously, you guys saw the tweet. Conor McGregor said, you know, 2024 for sure, we'll be back. You know, you said, man, I'm coming back in December, bro. 2024 for sure, I'll be there, mate. So I think you have to put together a pay-per-view in December for McGregor versus Chandler. I'm going to do December 7th, UFC 310. We're gonna do McGregor versus Chandler as the main event. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live in the fairy tale world where McGregor does actually come back. I think other fights you'd put on this card. Honestly, here's the thing about fucking December, right, dude? Here's the thing, dude. All these December pay per views. Be real with me here, guys. They are always so hyped up. They never deliver. They're always like, oh, number two versus number four. Oh my god, three title fights. But then you're sitting through a fucking women's title fight and a flyweight title fight, right? Like, they're, they're always the same. So I'm going to abandon that approach this year. I'm going to do December 7th, UFC 310, T-Mobile Arena. I'm just going to throw together the most batshit card possible. I'm going to do Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. I'm going to do Sean Strickland versus Robert Whittaker. I'm going to do Kamaru Usman versus Ian Gary. Sit down, shut up. All right. I'm going to do Dustin Poirier versus Nate Diaz. And I'm going to do Henry Cejudo versus Jose. Al Listen, dude. Listen, dude, 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 dude. I think we're going to go on pay-per-view, man. I think people are going to pay to watch the card, man. I, I, dude, dude, I think people are going to be mad about this part, dude. I know that's a batshit insane UFC five ass fight, but I think this is, a, this is the time where you just go, fuck it. It's the last card of the year, last pay-per-view of the year. Let's just do all these crazy fucking fun matchups that, that you know, people are going to be hyped for regardless of how they actually go. Because clearly going just title fight, title fight, title fight, it doesn't really deliver except for that one, you know, hood classic pay-per-view where it was uh, Pena beat Nunez and fucking Oliveira and, Ch and uh, Poirier had a great fight. That was a banger card. But besides that, these December cards have been kind of trash. So let's, let's do McGregor versus Chandler. Let's throw together some fun matchups. Usman versus Gary, Poirier versus Diaz. Hudo versus Aldo. That's what I'm thinking for December 7th. And then I've got two more cards for the rest of the year. And honestly, they could probably both be in the apex. One of them, I'm going to go international. Maybe that's a spoiler. But before we do that, December 14th, I'm going to do Jack Della Maddalena versus the loser of Leon versus Bilal. I've got Leon here because Bilal's going to TKO Leon, uh, Leon Mumblemouth Scott. But yeah, I think in the apex, JDM can return, or maybe you do. I don't know, maybe they do a fight night in Australia, but I don't know. I'm not going to travel too much. I'm not going to stress about the location. I'm just going to say fight night, December 14th, JDM returns. He fights the loser of the title fight, and he probably wins that, goes into contention in 2025. That's what I'm thinking, because with the injury to JDM, they're probably just going to give Shavkat the next title shot. That's why I gave him the shot in Abu Dhabi. So let's just have JDM come back in December and beat up Leon Edwards. Get a title shot. Okay, dude. All right. No bias whatsoever. All right, bro. Last card of the year. Hear me out, dude. December 28th. Almost New Year's Eve. Japan. Let's do, let's do fucking Pentoja versus Tyra in Japan, dude. December 28th. Let's do it, bro. Remember all those fucking New Year's Eve cards, all those Pride cards in Japan on New Year's. The Ryzen, Ryzen does it a lot. Pride used to do that shit. Let's fucking do it, bro. You're the UFC, dude. Have some fucking class, bro. Stop going to the fucking apex to finish off the year, dude. December 28th, Japan, fucking, what's this guy's name? Pantoja versus Tyra. Let's do it, all right? Kai Asakara can be on the card. Ray Saruya can be on the card. Let's fucking do it, man. Do it, bro. But yeah, this is my lineup for 2024. Let me know down below. What do you guys rate this lineup for 2024 out of 10? 
What do you think of the Fight Night main events and the big fights that I've made? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. By the way, for the guy that's mad in the comment, it's probably already commented by now. I forgot to say this, but um, this, this is just kind of a rough outline of what I would do if I was running the UFC. This is not a specific, like, you must do these fights, okay? So the guy come. I'm actually, Bogdan Guskov's going to a baby shower on August 24th. He can't fight that. Shut the fuck up, bro. All right, let me know what you think of these ideas in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this, drop a like. Subscribe to the best matchmaker on YouTube. That's me, by the way, all right? And uh, go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at BedtimeMMA. I will see you guys in the next video, man. Goodbye.